expert says 60% of the human body is made up of water, just like 75% of the Earth's surface is said to be Hello and welcome to Nationwide on the Network Service of the Nigerian Television Authority. I am Dennis Adigunbe. Information and Culture Minister Mohamed Idris, who is uh, urging all radio stations, both traditional and online, to be more responsible in their operations by adhering to the principles and ethics of broadcasting. This is as Nigeria joins the world to celebrate 2024 World Radio Day with the theme, Radio, a Century of Informing, Entertaining and Educating. Editorial functions such as fact-checking, objectivity and balance, the Minister says, must be ensured before news is released in order to uphold the credibility and trust associated with radio, which most Nigerians value highly. Mohamed Idris also wants sub-national governments and wealthy Nigerians to invest in establishing community radio stations to strengthen democracy and provide access to credible information for rural dwellers in line with President Bola Tinubu's renewed hope agenda. To make community radio more reliable and affordable, the Minister states that government is collaborating with UNESCO to drive reforms and has initiated necessary reforms in the process to establishing community radio stations as 89 of such have already been granted broadcast licenses in Nigeria. So, he expects radio listeners to use radio to learn, grow and make their voices heard. And in this era of technological innovations and the internet, radio still retains its relevance as one of the reliable and oldest modes of communication. Due to the effectiveness of radio and its unique power to impact the lives of the people, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organizations has aside the 13th of February annually as World Radio Day. Chibia Bir Umnia in this report takes a look at why radio remains Africa's lifeline in a digital world. Radio has in the past played an indispensable role in many African countries. Its accessibility, affordability, and timely delivery of news and information, especially in local languages, has made the radio a medium of choice even in the modern era. Radio is entertaining, it helps me to like calm myself. Because when the people who are in the room, they don't have access to TV, they can get information from the radio. Media practitioners in the radio industry say, although radio stations, including community-owned stations in Nigeria, are facing challenges in what they describe as content plurality, radio remains a tool for promoting Nigeria's heritage and protection of its natural resources. As a media person, you know what it takes to get content. You have to verify. It's not like somebody that will just go rush and post. Sometimes you, before you post an information, you need to verify information because you can't just be giving out fake news. Radio as a medium of communication. Communication is now 100 years old. The 2024 World Radio Day team. Radio, a century informing, educating, and entertaining, is an opportunity to celebrate how radio has contributed to the advancement of the society. The 100 years in being, um, it has passed through different phases. You know, initially, uh, it was uh, the radio distribution, distribution of the Taliban. Um, 
came through phases it has evolved over time you know and we pray that in the next uh, century that's the next hundred years we will we, 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 we see an improvement in radio on the occasion of the world radio day nigerians are advised to cultivate the habit of listening to the radio as it remains effective in the dissemination of information despite the emergence of the new media in Petakot, Chidi Abel on your NTN News. It's now across over to our Lagos Network Centre where Michael Lalea is standing there. Hello, Michael. Thank you, Dennis. The rise of digital era is no doubt taking a toll on traditional radio. Against all odds, radio, however, continues to remain pivotal in dissemination of news where there is no internet. Now, Bila takes a look at traditional radio in digital age. In those reports. Ten minutes gone past two o'clock. Yes, I'm right here. In the city of Lagos, Niger, where some people are already in school and radio as a medium of communication, information, entertainment, and education is also a reminder of its importance in promoting social cohesion. This year's observance of Radio Day is significant as it has crossed the 100 year milestone. In this digitized world, with the dominance of streaming services, the traditional radio remains afloat despite the challenges of low revenue social media, censorship, and economic constraints. The one important thing is that the changes are even to the advantage of radio. For example, radio on the wire is very portable. Radio is cheap. And now you are talking that you can listen to your radio even on phone. There are cheap, cheap phones that once you have it, just ring it and you are good to go. Yeah. It's important to never be written off in society, especially at this digital age. Radio may now be different in terms of its production processes and the kind of jobs radio professionals do. We're not going to have what our personality is like in the studio anymore, having the other way to the studio to do your thing. You can be at home and do your thing, and the people would listen to you everywhere in the world. That's what I'm saying. I mean, that's the future. Have the radio now. That human factor is still needed. So I'm not sure it's going to go out in a hurry. We will still have those that still have to do the job. We still need you to still come to see one or two things. Radio broadcasters are convinced that technology and radio have become one. And from there, they can only move to where they can move to and still be relevant. The Lagos, Lau, Delay. The labor of our heroes past shall never be in vain. A significant line in Nigeria's national anthem can only be guaranteed if the national heroes are remembered by Nigerians through education, especially history. Jobo Bola reports that 48 years after the assassination of General Mutala Muhammad in a coup led by Buka Dimka, many negotiations are oblivious of what happened on this day. February 13, 1976, it was a normal day, just like today. The workers were going about their normal businesses, oblivious of the tragedy that was facing to unfold. This normalcy was disrupted by gunshots fired by assailants on a mission to topple the government of General Musala Mohammed. 48 years after the demise of General Mutala Mohammed in that ill-fated coup, Negotiations have moved on as if nothing happened on that day. What is February 13? Okay, today that means to us. Well, I don't know that. So, um, I have totally forgotten what I want to say. It is comforting to note that there are those who still remember General Mutala Ramas Mohammed and the history surrounding his death. I know that uh, this has increased. Head of state. When they do head of state, they ask you for where you live. You will enjoy every Tuesday. Who's around me today? Who's around me today? Okay, so you are doing this time. Um, I'm okay. Some of the things are very well. Some of the things are doing well. Do you understand? So it's good to have a press pass to remember somebody. This was the exact spot where uh, General General Moritala Mohammed was killed. And the monument has been here ever since. And uh, 
as it is, if you look around, you see that uh, the place is being beautified. We are trying to ensure that uh, we maintain the place. Flowers, planting are all coming up around the place because uh, people were coming around to like vandalize. But a comeback, the last time Osaka played was at a time when she looked uncertain about her career. Stepping away from the sport for a long time seems to have helped her a lot as she returned with ambition to succeed. With Sports Update, Ulude Gutola, X News. All right, uh, let's now head to uh, Radio House and uh, get the latest from there on the World Radio Day. Senior makers provide access to information through the radio. Some residents of Abuja have stopped on the issuance of the radio to foster development and unity among the people. Radio is a way to connect with the world around us. It's a way to learn about new cultures, share different perspectives, share common ground with others. It's a primary source of news and information, especially in rural areas where other forms of media are less accessible. Radio has impacted the society over the years. Radio plays a vital role in educating people. Radio brings a lot to listeners of exploring tourist trips and entertainment. To get some vital information, it is known as radio radio can also get to what you listen to. For example, that girl of Shakata Fit in Nigeria, the secret in the middle of the world, the time goes for radio and could be able to know who won and the penalty of the same. You are a girl in the village, as far as a girl, you are radio, in hand, you can hear information. It's a cost effective way to reach a large number of people. From Nigeria, so I'm speaking in the essence of World Radio Day. Away from the day now, the people of Bailey Street and the Lord of the Lord of Nick Sala had a stake to remember to Allah Muhammad 48 years after his death. Ibrahim Alden spoke with the people in Nagadu, the state capital, as the nation chronicles the valuable contributions of the former leader before he was assassinated on February 13, 1976. That was demonstrated, especially during the powerful speech which we presented at the special summit of OAU in the Addis Ababa, the return to Africa has come of age. Now the content of the speech explained to the entire global system that Africa had decided to take its some place in the Committee of Nations in the international system. People will be in power, people will be in the country, they are afraid of making a new of the people will be able to work. Years after the summer had a state, General Mohsen Mohammed was assassinated. In some Nigerians of the South East Coast region are very impactful on Nigeria's political and economic growth. A retired head of service in the state, Dr. Matthew Ido, said the creation of Man State, including a day, ten days before General Mutala Muhammad was assassinated, remained a landmark achievement in the history of the country. Uh, apologies from the for the uh, abrupt abrupt ending uh, to uh, what happened there at uh, Radio House. That was uh, Harriet Adams. All right, uh, let's uh, crack on with the news here in uh, Monte Studios. Uh, in a bit, two more reviews in Guinea for the diseases and the plot of the state task force on immunisation and primary health care is fine-tuning ways of improving immunisation exercises in the state. Sir Abdati Mohamed Kasha reports. Headed here as stakeholders in the health sector, brainstorming on how to improve the health care delivery in the state, especially among women and children. Issues of concern raised at this meeting include late release of counterpart funding, inadequate manpower, inadequate maintain and supervision. Others are security challenges in some local governments, resulting to the decline of immunization exercise and closure of some primary health care facilities. The owner of Kaman, Mohammed Moazi Mohammed, who is also the co-chairman of the task force, says the meeting is to identify where areas and see how they can be tackled. We are much confident that uh, sustainability on this one will take us to the higher heights. Uh, we are much hoping by the, the government presence, uh, you see, will help us. State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Cletus Bakushukuk, commended partners for their efforts towards addressing the health needs of citizens. 
same government is ready to play its role to achieve national targets for primary health care intervention. This authorities also tasked with the responsibility of um, monitoring the activities in the state down to the local government level. Partners in their presentations highlighted the success stories as well as shortcomings where they noted that unimmunized children in the state in 2023 stood at 130,920 as against 69,708 in 2022. In Jets, Sarah Tumar Metcalfa, NTA News. Well, Mignan and the other Bian is a standby in Joss to give us more insight on efforts at reducing communicable diseases on the plateau. Mignan, can you uh, give us an update on the current situation there in Joss? Uh, thank you, Je uh, Dennis. Well, you know, immunization is an integral part of public health. As far as the advisory health coverage is concerned, targeting diseases that can cause disability and death, especially amongst children. It is in this light that the Plateau State Government keyed into the plans of federal government towards ensuring zero dose children are immunized. This is indeed by setting up a task force on immunization and primary health care with the deputy governor as chair. Traditional rulers, development partners and the media are members. The focus is to strengthen and train health care workers, ensure adequate and timely distribution of vaccines in not just urban centers but care to reach rural communities. The task force needs totally to brainstorm on ways to make immunization more effective across the state. Uh, the recent meeting looked at, among other things, the upcoming National Immunization Plus phase scheduled for March 2nd this year and how to increase immunization in the state, which dropped last year as a result of insecurity in Mangu, Bokos, Bontulabi and your local government areas where some primary health care facilities were destroyed and could not be accessed by um, uh, health workers. Uh, other issues that are militating against immunization in the state are inadequate funding and health resource for health workers. Uh, Dennis, it might also interest you to know that out of the 102 local government areas in the country with zero dose children, four local government areas of Pampang, Shenbon, Penom, and Wasu have been identified in Plateau State. The task force is working to ensure that advocacy, enlightenment, and vaccines are taken to these local government areas, plus um, ensuring that uh, child mortality is reduced and a quality of health for children, and to see that no child is left behind as far as um, immunization is concerned. Uh, and ahead of the upcoming um, National Immunization Plus Day schedule for 2nd of March this year, there are about um, 2,022 ad hoc personnel who are to move house to house to administer vaccine. Uh, we also have um, 500 teams that are mining six posts where parents and caregivers uh, can go at their uh, convenience to have their children immunized. Um, interestingly, there are also uh, 372 uh, special teams that are to work in places where children are mostly found, like the market, the church, the mosque, and schools. Uh, most importantly, I must say, uh, the health education unit working closely with the media will ensure the right information reaches uh, people on immunization. Dennis? Thanks, Mbenyan. Uh, just give us uh, what have been the reactions of the parents and beneficiaries of this uh, government's intervention. Um, uh, in Plato State, you know that because of the security uh, challenge in, um, in some of these local government areas, 
uh, where two of them are being displaced. Uh, the state government and development partners like the UNICEF have set up um, clinics in these um, um, IDP camps where children who need immunization uh, will be captured. This is in a bid to ensure that, uh, like I said earlier, no child is left uh, behind as far as immunization is concerned. And I must say that our parents are really quite excited because um, with the house to house immunization, they are bringing the vaccine to their doorstep. So issues of um, uh, no transportation, I'm not able to uh, take my child to uh, immunization uh, post, they're coming to your doorstep, they're coming to you. So parents are really looking forward uh, to this exercise. Yeah, very good news there from uh, Yorenda and Ndenyan. Many thanks for giving us that uh, overview. And, uh... The Minister of Marine and the Economy, Bibiga Oyetala, says the implementation of Port's Community System, PCS, in Nigeria will automate and position ports in the country for increased global trade benefits. Musa Abubakar reports that this is one or this was the position of the Minister when he received the PCS report in Abuja. It's been a painstaking process, and in the end, the port community system report is ready for implementation and submitted here to the minister by members of Nigerian Ports Authority and the International Port Community Systems Association. The purpose of the PCS is for Nigeria to comply with the dictates of the Convention on Facilitation of International Maritime Traffic of the International Maritime Organization, whose main objectives are to prevent unnecessary delays in maritime traffic, as well as aid cooperation between governments, amongst other objectives. <laughs> The next line of action is implementation as the move is expected to enhance the ease of doing business and trade facilitation. For the most important part of the project, we wish the procurement of the company to deploy the PCS for which the MSCD seek the kind consideration and backing of the Honorable Minister to actualize as quickly as possible. The submission of the consultant's report is a combination of the intensified synergy between the Nigerian Ports Authority and the International Maritime Organization in Abuja. I'm Zabu Bakar, Two governments of Nigeria and the United Kingdom have agreed to implement strategies that will further remove trade barriers and deepen trade for increased prosperity of both countries. To this end, pen has been put to paper between the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment and the UK Secretary of State, Departments of Business and Trade in Abuja. Benny Adams reports. These are two women in business. One is British, but of Nigerian descent. Both men understand what it means to be in business at times such as this, particularly as it relates to enhanced trade and investment partnerships. Nigeria and UK total trade in goods and services, including exports plus imports, were £6.7 billion in the four quarters to the end of quarter 3, 2023, an increase of 2.1%, £136 million in cash value. Now, the agreement bordering on more than 40 euros in interest seeks in one hand increase the volume of trade on both sides and on the other create more jobs and wealth. So what you will be able to pay the business in between our countries. The moving trade is also something that we have to look at. And the opportunity is also creating a new technology. We can trade, we can check the trade. 
He suspected that with the movement to walk the talk in this and many other similar engagements, Nigeria's run to run economy will be a reality sooner than expected. In Abuja, Benny Adams, NTA News. Abu Waka Musa has the next set of stories from Mabugri. Abu Waka, it's over to you. For Belize, it's actually good to see you. The Mystic government has expressed readiness to partner with the Nigerian Institute of Labor and Science Technology, NILEST, to boost labor technology and production in the state. Governor Bagabana Umar Azulim made this known when he received a delegation from NILEST, led by its Director General, Professor Mohamed Kabir Yakulu, on a courtesy visit at the government house in Ibn. Here is Mohamed Kabir with the rest of the story. Abedo Institute, located in Samaru Zaria, Kaduna Sea. Nigeria Institute of Labor and Science Technology was established in 1964 as a hard and skin demonstration training project, while the center in Nayubri was established in 1972. Governor Wendell Omar said the state government will collaborate with the institute in creating employment opportunities through vocational technology and contribute to the overall economic development of the region. We are the the governor directed the Ministry of Education to compile them for 54 years with teach them each local government area of the state for intensive training on labor technology and production. However, I expressed concern that the Russian government was not aware of the activities of Niles, my degree center, until their visit. Niles Director General Professor Mohamed Kabir Yakuna commended the Russian governor for his courage and exemplary leadership, describing him as a role model for Nigerian youth. The DG highlighted some of the activities of the Institute and the Maidubri Center, requesting support of the state government to enhance its activities. He assured the governor of Niles' commitment to partnering with the Burma state government in reviving labor production in the state. In Maidubri, Mohamed Goni, NTMS. When talking education now, officials of the World Bank said they will continue to monitor the activities of Adolescent Girls Initiative for Learning and Empowerment, Agile, towards the realization of its mandate of retaining young child in school. This came up when officials of the World Bank, as well as that of National Project Coordinating Unit of Adolescent Girls Initiative for Learning and Empowerment, Agile, visited Nibibri, the Provostic Capital, as part of a routine school visit and monitoring of project implementation, implementation concerning activities of Agile. The report. The routine school visit and monitoring of project implementation took the World Bank officials and that of the National Project Coordinating Unit of Agile to Government Girls College in Dubai, the Royal Government Girls Secondary School, Government Girls Secondary School and Government College in Dubai. The August visitors were emphatic that most of the project inspected were not only visible but have met the World Bank criteria especially in terms of quality and quantity. We are quite impressed with what we have seen. There has been a lot of innovation our school infrastructure this is what we want to see and uh, we're very, very happy that that's happening. Commissioner of Education, Science, Technology and Innovation, who is also the Chairman Steering Committee of Agile, Lauren Abu Akindu, while receiving the high-powered delegation, described the visit as an opportunity for key drivers in the Agile project in Beru to deliver on their mandates. I expect them to take all the feedbacks and work on them. The Rostic Project Coordinator of Agile, Ibrahim Baba, affirmed to follow the activities of Agile to logical conclusion towards encouraging girl child enrollment and retention in school. All the things that need to be done is going to be done and all the correction of that is going to be corrected. This routine visit and monitoring of project implementation across seven participating states in Nigeria is in line with the forms allocated for the smart running of Adolescent Girls Initiative for Learning and Empowerment Project. 
if we are just joining us here on to Nation Live on the Nigerian Television Society, let us at this point return to Dennis and Abuja for more stories for us. Television in TV is friendly for all classes, inclusive in and video environment of the NVA Television College, where we govern ourselves with you yes. For more information, please call 03 National Assembly, where the House of Representatives has passed a resolution urging the Chief Judge of the Federal High Court, Abuja, to halt the ongoing recruitment of judges to fill vacancies, citing a lack of compliance with the Federal Character Principle and Quota System. Adopting a motion by Representative Gary and the House mandated its committee on judiciary to investigate the federal character approval of the recruitment process and report back to the House for further legislative action. National Assembly Correspondent Natari Ekman reports that the House, however, stepped down a bill seeking to make first degrees or their equivalents the minimum educational qualification for elections into certain political offices after an extensive debate for second reading. The mission is the highest political office in the land. It's a managing director who holds an active role in strategic position in a government within this country cannot be employed without a university degree or its equivalent. Why should the government run offices chaired by people without a university degree or its equivalent? I do not believe that we should fall to all categories of universities. As a local government in Benin University, you need to look at the local government for people where the students are. By asking that we all people in education, we also encourage our children those of them that aspire to public offices, they must know that not education is now necessary. Your level of education is never a permanent factor to what you will be if you are placed in an office as a president, governor, member, house of representatives. And now you are saying, only the degree holder can be a franchise. And we hear that if you are franchised, you know that 90% of our population is discriminatory, you know, against uh, others. He has moved to step down the bill. But remember, remember, the thing it has to do with constitutional amendment could come through the House and also could come in form of memoranda. Uh, let's now head over to our Enugu Network Center where Chineng is uh, standing by. Hello Chineng, what's uh, happening at your end? Thank you so much, Benz. Welcome to Enugu. Agri Processing Centers and Solar Powered Bubbles constructed by Enugu State International Fund for Agricultural Development Value Chain are now in use in Enugu State. The State Commissioner for Agriculture and Agro-Industrialization, Patrick Ogu, believes that the state-owned agro centers will boost the economic base of Enugu State. Kelechi Ochiara reports. The paddy rice, by the rumor, used to be a bit difficult because we had only one engine and one in there. But when the fact came, we had more than one engine, in fact, more than two. Before now, we have never had this kind. So, it's a, a kudos because this is a world stock rice mill. Five out of 17 local governments of the state are among the beneficiaries of rice and cassava value chains. Some of the projects are two functional rice mill processing centers at Neome in Anuri, solar powered boreholes in Amechi Dodo and Vulo in Kanu East. Cassava processing centers at Umuagame Zimo and that of Obokinike in Enugu East. Other projects handed over to the beneficiaries include market stores at Umualo 
and Ufor Ibo, a Mrs. Akasi area, among other projects. The State Commissioner for Agriculture and Agro Industrialization, Patrick Fibo, says that state government is committed to deepening its collaboration with the state's VCDP through mechanized agriculture to boost food production and improve livelihood of small neighbors farmers. Most of the projects we have visited, it is channeled towards improving the livelihood of the farmers. State Project Coordinator Dr. Edward Isio, in appreciation, thanks the government for their commitment in ensuring the program succeeds through genuine collaboration for robust food production. What any state government, what Federal Minister of Agriculture, and what Alpha VCDP is doing is manifesting in coming to Enugu State. Enugu State is among the nine states in the country that is currently benefiting from the International Fund for Agricultural Development Program Valuation Transformation Agenda in Enugu. Kenji Okiara, NTA News. The Minister of Human Affairs and Social Development, Uju Kennedy Ohanewe, has placed a 2 million naira bounty on young Mrs. Adachuku Okafo, who allegedly inflicted bodily harm on Ibaino, Happiness Mwafo, her living house help in Onisha and Abra State. The viral video of the battered house help has continued to generate public outcry and protest. <laughs> These women from Ego, Enugu State, are protesting the inhumane treatment offered on one of their own, the 11 year old house of Happiness Wafo, allegedly maltreated by her guardian, then Mrs. Adachuku Okafo, based in Anisha, Anambra State. The woman inserted a knife and used this on her, on her face, on her buttocks, on her vagina, on her thighs. When but she, she directed her to date her 30 year old son and said she was fucking with the child's genitals. Tell me how you date somebody and not touch the person's genitals. With the collaboration of the Anambra, Enugu, and federal governments, the battered minor is receiving medical treatment in one of the hospitals in Anambra State. But the perpetrator of the heinous act is said to be at large. The legal woman apprehended. The perpetrator must not go unpunished. She has to face the law. She has to be saved to justice. Meanwhile, the Minister of Women Affairs and Social Development, Uju Kennedy Ohanene, has placed a reward of 2 million naira for any member of the public with information concerning the whereabouts of the said Mrs. Adachuku Okafo. And those are the stories from Enugu. My colleague in Kaduna Network Center is standing by for the next set of reports on Nationwide. very much and a warm welcome. Good evening. Human development is identified as a bedrock for sustainable development and economic prosperity of every society. This was the submission of stakeholders in education at the Frankfurt organized by the Jugawa State Government for more than 190 MBBS students to study in India and Cyprus. Muhammad Musa Askira has the details. This is Modi France in Jigawa State, sponsoring intelligent students to study professional courses like medicine, engineering, law and other scientific studies necessary for modern human capital and societal development has been the trend identified with Uma Namadi administration. However, this is different in respect of the number and the male to female ratio of the students. Out of the 194 students, 117 are females. This the governor says is in line with the Islamic culture that requires female doctor to see and examine the female patients at hospitals. We are fighting for territorial states and come on with our prizes. This is clearly demonstrated in the use of the modern budget, industrial budget, in which we fall on on 32 percent out of 100 percent is allocated to the educational sector. About five billion naira has been spent on tuition fees, feeding, health insurance, and transport of the students to the two countries. To think that we are going to let that we have our way to produce our public places, our possible our identity places in the same state, which are the central institutions, the central places. By this, the state would spend no less than 40 billion naira and take the graduation of the medical students from India and Cyprus. From BT, Muhammad.
Mohammed Musa Askira. Thank you, Emil. And that is all we can take on our bulletin from here is back to Dennis in Abuja. All right, uh, thank you, uh, Salamatu. The death of the Asabah of Asabah will be Chukka Bezna has been officially announced by the palace chiefs. Tessie Koko is uh, standing by live now at the palace. Uh, Tessie, just uh, give us the latest after this uh, announcement. Thank you very much. Yeah, he is sat on his chair at the palace of the Asaba of Asaba. In fact, they are officially announced. This is that the Asaba of Asaba, Professor Chike Doze, has uh, finally joined his ancestors. He was here as a child, but because we are seeing the future as a black one here in Mali today, the prince here is the rightful memories of the Asaba of Asaba. All right, uh, that was a yes, sir. Okay, and finally, uh, before the briefing, uh, the uh, traditional chiefs uh, paid homage for the first quarter. They are called the youths, and they are here to pay homage to uh, the, uh, the king who has joined his ancestors. And of course, they are telling us that uh, since it's been announced, uh, the family, the burial arrangements will be announced by the family in due course. That is the situation here right now. Let's see. Uh, Tessie, before uh, before I let you go, uh, just uh, before I let you go, just uh, before I let you go, just uh, just uh, give us a brief uh, highlights of what uh, the people there have been telling you about, what they know, their experiences of the late uh, monarch. Idea of what people have been telling you there about uh, their experiences uh, knowing you're the deceased. Uh, there's a bit of an audio challenger uh, where she is, it's uh, clearly very noisy there. Well, we'll give you more updates uh, on that uh, as we get it in. For now, that is nationwide. Many thanks for watching. I am Dennis Adigunloy.